shit. Oh, f you. Hey, thanks for joining us at Duckman Cycles VW Garage. I am your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with my 1956 Volkswagen Beetle Oval, also known as Eleanor. Here she is right there in the video back when I was doing laughing, apparently, and building a Volkswagen gas tank. That's another story altogether. It was a 1956 gas tank on top of a later model gas tank, and I made a hybrid tank between the two because my 1956 Volkswagen Beetle is not stock. I got a car, unfortunately, that was under six feet of seawater during Hurricane Ivan and it got completely destroyed. Some people hate that I give that intro, but I'm taking on so many new subscribers right now that I have to give a little background to the beginning of the car and how I got it. Or otherwise, some people just say some really, really crappy remarks. So at the beginning of every video, I'm going to give you a little blurb as to what happened. But yes, under six feet of seawater and Hurricane Ivan about, about 12 years ago, it actually was. In fact, you know, 14 years ago now. But it was left out to sit for 10 years after that in the weather and just got completely destroyed. And I came and I took the car home and immediately I started taking it apart. And when I took it apart, broke in half. So I did the best that I could to rebuild it with whatever I had available because I knew I was just never gonna get the car straight. So I made the car as straight as I wanted it to be. And in my case, I made a custom. So Eleanor, as she is, is a complete custom. There she is outside right there, waiting for me to work on her. She needs a, a little more welding to the body, not a whole lot. I'm just about getting ready to start doing a, a light skim of some body filler and uh, putting a coat of primer on it. But before we get to that, we need to work on what's down below. So like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that little dingle belly down there next to the subscribe button that we get updates every time I upload a video. And also, please join me over on the Duckman Cycles and Volkswagen Garage Facebook page. Over there, we'll have a discussion of this project as well as some others. So with that said, let's go ahead and roll the intro. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, we're back. Thanks for watching. In the intro, while I was between videos, while the intro was rolling, how about that? Because it's real time. That's how it works, right? But anyways, in that time, my phone actually rang, and it's been blooping and bleeping, and it's been doing a lot of that since since Thursday afternoon. Uh, I've actually got to drive into a war zone. I've been called to um, travel out to Tallahassee to fix some computers over at a restaurant over there. Uh, anyways, with that said, uh, over on my other channel, VV the Duck VV, I put some of my storm updates about Hurricane Michael, and I will then be posting this trip and adventure as well as some of the storm damage that I will be seeing uh, on video over on the channel. People keep asking me, you know, how'd you do in the storm over here? Well, I keep telling you guys, you got to go over to my other channel and subscribe because that's where I put those videos. I mean, I had nothing but Hurricane Michael updates for two days, and I put up a total of five videos in, in about a about a 24-hour period, uh, probably even less than that. It might have been about an 18-hour period. So, you know, always I invite you guys to subscribe. I always invite you guys to look at my other channel. I mean, there's so much going on in my life that I just couldn't put it all on one channel because not everything's about Volkswagens or motorcycles. So anyways, we're going to jump right back on this project right here, and we're going to discuss something that I keep getting asked questions for that I have not really addressed. And one of the big questions that I keep getting asked is, since I put in these IRS trailing arms from a Porsche, and now that it has a Porsche mounting flange on the uh, axle stub that goes in there, what kind of axle am I going to use to attach this to the transmission? And the answer is the 944 CV joints are actually the same as a Volkswagen bus, which is also the same as a Volkswagen thing. A Volkswagen thing also uses the same, well, a very similar transmission to a Beetle, but they use different CV flanges. So these little cups that are on here are actually a, a larger size than that of a Beetle. These are Beetle CV joints right here. This is a Volkswagen thing cup. And I don't know if the camera can really see it from that angle, but it's it's about 10 millimeters smaller. The CV joints on the bus are 100 millimeter, and I think the bus Beetle ones are 90 millimeter. So this will not bolt up, and that is correct. However, the bus CV joints and the Porsche ones are the same size. So what you do <laughs> is you get one of two things. And I'm hoping this width is accurate. But so what you need is you need an axle, which is from either a Vanagon 
or a 944, Porsche 944. These have the same size mounting flanges with the same size bolt pattern, with the same size bolts, with the same thickness of axles. But, on a Beetle, you can see the difference in the thickness of axle. A Beetle is actually smaller, and the CV joint is actually smaller. I don't know if the camera actually can tell the difference there, but yeah, you see how much smaller the Beetle one is on the one side there. So this is actually an upgrade for what it's worth. But I need to make sure this length is going to be okay to fit in here. And I think it will be, or at least pretty close. Yeah, it's looking like it's going to go in there. Okay, I'm going to compress this axle together as best I can. I'm going to have to cut the zip ties on it. These things need to be packed with grease anyway. But first, let me go ahead and weasel these little guys around and make sure that they fit in place. And they probably should. From what I've been told, these things should go right in there. So let's see what happens. Now it's a little tricky to put in an axle in a car that was lowered because what happens is the axle stub and the transmission are in line and they're much closer together as opposed to when they move this way apart. So it's really hard to get that axle into place. But looking at this here, actually is going to drop right in here and the CV joint bolt flanges are going to work out just fine. So the stock 944 turbo axles are actually going to work on here just as intended. So I was a little concerned about the size of them and whether or not they were going to work. But it looks like these are just fine. So I don't have to return them to the auto parts place. But I have two core axles that I can send back. <laughs> so I can get back about $80 in core charges. So uh, yeah, we'll probably be returning those later today. Because if I'm not mistaken, a bomb 79 is going to have my front brakes done sometime later today, or at least that's what he said. Now, if that's not the case, you know, I'm not going to hold him to it because he's really going outside of his way to help me with this. But he's making a very good video about what custom work is, what custom work takes, and how long it takes a machinist to make things happen. So if you don't like paying for it, then don't ask for the work. <laughs> and I respect him for that. I have a different industry, but I'm exactly the same boat. Everything that I do is custom. And if you want me to do it outside of the package of whatever it is that I'm offering to you, you're going to pay for it. That's just the way it works. And, I, you know, of course, I'm always reasonable and I give people a fair price. But if you expect something different or expect something custom, you know, I'm going to, going to ask for a price for it. Hopefully we get some front brakes today. And if we do, that's going to be the next video. But the good news is these axles are going to work. So the next step in this is packing them up with grease and getting them bolted in. Well, we got a little problem. Upon opening up the second box here, and this really gets my goat, but looking at this guy and how it was packaged, you know, it's got a plastic cap on the end, it's been shrink wrapped with plastic. It just looks like it was packaged very differently. And inside the package, this is what really surprises me. And this is something I was having difficulty finding. But inside of there was a set of the bolts, as well as those funky looking torque washers that go around the CV joints every other bolt. And of course grease, that's what that is in a tube. Well, the other axle came packaged just like this, just bare. Somebody had apparently been in this before. There's a little bit of rust on the inside of it, not much, but there's some rust spots. This was probably sitting on a shelf for a while, I would imagine. But I got a feeling this was somebody's return, because in that package, was some grease, but there was no bolts. So, this one is gonna go back. But unfortunately, guess what? Yep, you probably guessed right. They have none in stock. So this video is gonna be put on hold until I can get a set of axles for this car. They got one on order for me. It should be there by noon tomorrow. So I'll go hit them up tomorrow. It's coming from the west, and shipping from the west is not being slowed down due to anything having to do with Hurricane Michael. So, we'll just have to come back to this video and finish it up later. I guess meanwhile we'll go weld on the body and make a video about that instead. So thanks for watching. Okay, well we're back again and we straightened out the axle issue. I went ahead and I picked up another one that actually it had the hardware in the box. But uh, when I pulled it apart when I got it home, I discovered that they're both different colors. The ones on the top are gold, kind of like my brakes are. And the other one is more of a shiny silvery appearance so uh, <laughs> I'm not taking them back again I'm not dealing with that bullshit that's just a pain in the ass and I'm just gonna have to suck it up they are both the correct axle however 
I'll just do like I did with the uh, little ends here, that these are gold and these are silver, and that's just the way they turned out. So I'm going to put the gold one on the side with the gold, I put the silver one on the side with the silver, and I'm going to call it done. It really annoys the shit out of me that it has to be that way, but you know what? That's just, that's just how we're going to have to do it. Now the next thing that needs to be done is I have to pull the CV joints off the end of the axles. I have to grease pack them. And this is probably, by far, the dirtiest, nastiest, sloppiest job that you can do with a Volkswagen. Just, it is. There's just, it's messy, it's, it's a pain in the ass, and you might as well be wearing a full body condom if you're going to be doing this because you're just going to get grease all over you. Uh, in the last video, or I should say earlier in this video, because actually that was yesterday, uh, I did put an axle into place and I did discover that they fit perfectly. So an off the shelf 944 disc will work with the 944 trailing arms on a Beetle with a Beetle transmission with Volkswagen Thing drive flanges that use the bus size CV joints. You know, talk about a cobbled together mess. This rear end here is so complicated with so many different parts. It reminds me so much of my SV650's front end here. And I, just to begin to tell you, I mean, there's higher boosted discs on it. The wheel is off, an, I think it's an S-Rad. Uh, uses an S-Rad triple tree. The uh, forks are from a GSXR 1000. The brakes came off of a, um, I think a 600. So, I mean, the, the parts on this are just so complicated and just so mixed up. But everything bolted right on. So, you know, excellent. And, of course, it went on to an SV650, which is nothing like any of the parts that are on it. So, yeah, this rear end reminded me very much of uh, putting that Suzuki front end together on that, uh, that motorcycle. So, yeah, assembling the rear end on this Volkswagen reminded me very, very much of my SV650 when I did that project a couple years ago. Oh, Jesus, more than a couple years ago now. I'm looking back at it. It was probably about 10 years ago. And, of course, I finished that project long before anything else. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go ahead and pull these CV joints out of the plastic and uh, get them set up on a little table and see if we can start greasing these puppies. And, uh, like I said, it's going to be a sloppy mess. So I might as well get myself ready for this one. Okay, if you ever packed wheel bearings before, this is very similar to that. The only difference is these things are big, and they're designed to flex, unlike a typical roller bearing. It's the concept and how these work inside of here. Now what you're going to need is you're going to need a screwdriver, maybe in case you need to pry something apart. You're going to need a set of needle nose pliers in case you've got to grab or pinch something. You also need a set of... Um, what do they call these? Spring clip removers. It'd be nice if we don't drop them on the ground. These are spring circ clip removers, and uh, these are extremely useful if there's a little clip at the end of the CV joint. Now, there's supposed to be one here. There's also supposed to be one on the other side of the CV joint, but sometimes, sometimes they omit them. So we're going to find out exactly what we got once we get in there. Of course, you're going to need some grease, and this is proper Molly lithium blah 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 CV joint grease, so make sure you have some. We're probably going to use about half of a container per CV joint. So you want two containers because we've got four CV joints. And then lastly, and probably most importantly, you want some rubber gloves. This is going to make an extreme mess. So once you get started doing this task, you don't want to stop until you're done. So you don't just want a single set of gloves, you're probably going to want two, because in case you split one, you're going to want them nearby. You can't go running back into the house and grabbing doorknobs and stuff trying to grab your next set of gloves, because what are you going to do? You're going to get grease all through the house. And we're going to demonstrate how this works. Before I do anything, before I even put the gloves on, let's go ahead and tear the plastic off of these things. Now wherever you're working, you want to make sure that your CV joints aren't going to roll off your table and wind up on the ground somewhere. Okay, that is a CV joint. You see the bearings inside of it? And it's not designed to roll, rather it's designed to flex. Okay, there's one on the end of each axle, which is why they would call them double-jointed axles. Now, if you own a swing axle-based beetle, you actually don't have these. These can be incredibly useful while packing. Extremely useful while packing. You know, I don't... Because that will stop the grease from going through the joint and falling all over the ground. So we're going to save those. I can't believe these joints are, well, the boots spe specifically. Well, the joints are a different color, too. The CVs are actually a different color. And so is the axle. That is a real pain in the hump, but, I mean, everything was the same part number, and this was the only way I was going to get them. I'm not arguing. <laughs> I'm just going to have uh, to be happy with what I got. Okay, in the end here, you see the spring, the spring clip, or sir clip. You put the little tool in here like this, and you squeeze it. And these are extremely convenient tools because look at how easy that came off. You can't do that with a pair of pliers quite as easily, just the same way. And then of course this CV joint will pull right out of here. Now the boot appears to be bonded to it, so I'm going to have to separate the boot from the joint. 
and sometimes that takes a little bit of uh, a little bit of tapping right here and yeah, somebody's got it pressed in already okay there it is there's our first joint put that right in that little plastic cup that they gave us extremely convenient now you don't want to take these things apart don't disassemble them put that up in a safe place and we're gonna come back to that in a minute I have not put on my gloves yet because I really haven't touched anything too dirty or too greasy it looks like the boots are already filled with grease check that out I don't know what they quite had in mind here but uh, yeah it's, it's semi pre-greased and that circlip is really sloppy on there it's almost like it's too big actually you know what? it's not a circlip it's just a washer big problem I always have with these gloves is that my hands are just too damn big even for the biggest size that they have they never go in the right way so when I'm working with these gloves and they bust and I've got to put another set on and the other glove is all greasy I'm usually better off just taking off this second glove which hasn't split this one already broke just trying to put it on starting over and uh, just taking both gloves off because otherwise I'm just gonna get grease all over my hand because the glove that didn't bust which is now filthy is just spreading stuff everywhere all right now as I said before this is about the messiest thing that you can do on a Volkswagen now there is pumps that you can put the CV joint in you grease it and you just and it pushes through I don't own a pump I don't do them often enough to own a pump but what you're gonna do is real simple just take grease and just start pushing it in work your way around it and just keep pushing it in and try to not put any in the bolt holes I already did because anything that goes in the bolt holes is just a waste and when you go to put the bolts in what happens is you push the grease out the other side and what does it do it makes a mess know if that's coming through or not because of the cap but by now usually I've, you, know, you can start to see it I'm starting to see it come through okay just needs some more abuse yeah, and this is a little time-consuming not like wheel bearings where you can push the grease through pretty quickly yeah it's finally starting to come through you can see it there just keep whacking away at this thing and as I said you're gonna put about half a container of grease into these things there is a lot of voids inside of them oh yeah oh. <laughs> I'm enjoying this too much I just like packing bearings you just kind of slap it in and the hydraulic pressure will cause it to push through. In fact at this point I could probably put some in the other side and just push it in and be done with it. Yeah I'm gonna call that done. It's pushed through all the way around here. I'm just gonna put a little bit on this side just to bring it all up and even. Let's give it a smudge and you don't have to put any more in than making it flush like that and whatever's in the center axle hole and boy I should have really really should have put tape over these bolt holes that was pretty foolish for me not to but it's too late now I've done that before and I kept the grease out of the bolt holes it was a whole lot easier to install these things without making a damn mess okay flip it over looks good we're gonna go with that one next same method and that was about half a container of grease like I said this might take oh about 30 minutes or so for all four let's see how we're doing here that one took the grease a whole lot faster okay I'm just gonna give it one more smudge on the back side here and you only have to make it flush you don't need any more than that and then try to push out the excess from the center and wipe it down a little bit if you can okay put it back in the cup and next one the second one took grease real quickly 
and we're almost out of a container of grease. It actually took less than half a container. I'm kind of surprised. It's the first time I've ever actually packing them on a Volkswagen. Some of the grease just blobbed off the table on the ground. If you do that, make sure you don't step in it. Go ahead and check the back side. There it is. Already came through, it's already flush. Take a little bit extra. Just like that. Flush. Put it in the cup, put it aside. Next. Looks like I'm going to use everything up in the one and barely touch the second one to get these done. <sighs> hey, you know what? I remember why I use uh, two containers of it. But because you're supposed to take some and put it in the boots when you're done. But because the boots have already been pre-greased, um, there's nothing for me to nothing for me to put in there. So, and yeah, look at that. All that grease has already been pushed into that bearing. Putting them in these plastic cups is really nice. Makes it a whole lot easier to press that grease in. I mean, I don't have to slap it so much. I just kind of push down on it. <laughs> Get in there for a little bit more. What the hell? There was a giant air bubble inside of that. That's about half a container. That's some shit. You cheap bastards. Unbelievable! It wasn't even a whole container. I just, <laughs> first one was. In fact, the first one seemed like it had a little more in it than they usually do. Check the back side, make sure it came through. And it did. A little bit more on the back side, make it flush. Just like that. Push the center out. No reason to have such a greasy center because once you put it on the axle stub, it's just going to push it right through. And, you know, I forgot to do the same thing to this one. All right, now as I told you, this is a messy damn job. This is not something you want to do often. This is not something you want to do again. So you make sure you do it right the first time, and you get these things thoroughly packed. So that way, as I showed you, the grease comes through on both sides, and you want it just about flush. And I put it in the bolt holes like a damn idiot. So when I bolt this thing together, there's going to be grease coming out all over the place. But, I'm just going to have to deal with it. Okay, we're going to take our axle here, slide it on the end, just like that. Clean off some of the grease just a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. And you know what I didn't do that I should have done? I should have lined up the axle boot with the bolts, because the boot doesn't spin on the shaft. The CV joint I can by turning it on the splines. Get those bolt holes lined up because otherwise you got to twist the boot and that will put a little bit of extra stress on the boot and might cause it to fail prematurely. There we go, our holes line up now. Okay, here we are. Ready for a circlip. Prop that up just like so. One circlip. And one missing circlip tool, which apparently is buried over here. And yeah, you're going to get your tools nasty, greasy, dirty. Try to put as much of the new grace that you can back in the container so you could reuse it. Try to waste as little as possible. Alright, one circlip. And with greasy hands, or in this case gloves, it's really hard to get a good grip on the tool to put it on. But should still be able to do it. And you'll know when it's on, it'll click into place. But it's always better if you can get a visual, but because it's buried in grease, it's a little hard to make that happen sometimes. And I think we're in. Yep, here it is. One circlip mounted, or is it? It was, now it's seated. There it is. Alright, this sucker is ready to go. Man, I got it all over the boot, too. What a slob. My god. This is where your paper towels are going to come into play. Oh, boy. <laughs> Alright, we're going to put one on the other side. One more CV joint. Try to line up them bolt holes if you can. I got this plastic cap on here still. There 
There we go. Bolt holes lined up. Okay, ready for a circlip. Alright, make sure that it's seated. Push it in the whole way around. As I told you, it's a little hard to get a visual on these things because they are so greasy. And your clip is in place. Excellent. Throw more shit away. Next. Let me pull this here, make this ready to go. Make sure our bolt holes line up with the boot. They do. This one's a little bent. This is where the pliers come into play. You said, well, you don't normally need pliers for this. Well, this is the case where your start clip's a little messed up. When I opened it, it bent a little bit. But now it's effectively round again. Now, if I needed to go get those pliers, I would have had to dig through my toolbox with hands like this, and it would have been a mess. So yeah, don't question why I need pliers, because I just demonstrated. Boy, we're going to need some nice parts cleaner on all this stuff. Okay. So our clip is on. So our clip is on. Here it is. Reverse. One more left. And I hate doing this. And I've never been neat about it either. I'm sure I'm probably messier than most people are. In fact, I know I'm messier than most people are at it. This is just one of those things. This is why I gear up and I put down a tablecloth and why I wear gloves. All right. I've got the CV joint on there. Let's go ahead and get our sir clip in the tool. Just like that. End of the shaft, squeeze and press. Okay, just make sure that it's seated just like the rest of them. And it wasn't, not until I pressed on it and I heard it click. Still not seated on this side either, so there it is. Effectively, we are finished with this. Just make sure nothing's gonna come apart. Throw away all your excess garbage. Get ready to start wiping some stuff down. That's next on the list is getting these things clean again, and I'm really sorry I got it in a boot here. That's just a really pain in the ass to clean up. Before you put these things on, the last thing that we need to do to, to lubricate these, and it's kind of a surprise it might be to you, but this CV joint boot actually is full of grease. Normally I would put some in, but there was already some in there. Usually it's, it's two fingerfuls, put it down in the boot, and then assemble this thing. But uh, once you've got this far, you want to push it together, so that way any air that's in that boot squeezes out from around this joint and any grease that's in the boot will then push into the CV joint. It'll keep a little bit of pressure on it and uh, keep the sucker greased up. That's good. Do the same thing on the other side and repeat it for all of them. Okay, that's ready for a cleaning and a mounting. At this point, we're ready to go. I'm going to clean up this mess. I hate this part. This always leaves a black streak down your friggin' wrist. And you are going to need a lot of paper towels for this. Because you've got to start wiping these axles down. Clean the boots off. And if you do this right, you shouldn't get your hands too dirty. You're going to soil the paper towels instead, though. But, at this point... I'd say this is clean enough to get it on the car, and any more cleaning that I do, I can relegate to while it's on the car. I'll spin it around and wipe it down. Now, there it is, ready to go. Oh boy. Now, you're going to also want to take a little bit of grease, and you want to slap it into the drive flange on the transmission, and a little bit of grease and slap it into the drive flange on the axle stub. Not much, just a little bit. Again, that helps to keep the grease in the CV joint when you put it all together. You put in too much though, it's going to squeeze out everywhere, so don't go too crazy. Don't pack it absolutely full. <laughs> I think you guys get the point. Looks like we're going to need some more of those. 
some guys in some of the uh, shop videos and manuals that I've watched have said keep an entire roll of paper towel around. And they're not expensive, you know, they cost you a whole dollar. So use an entire roll of paper towel if you have to. Me, I didn't do too bad. That was about a quarter of a roll and I'm almost done. Okay, it's time to get that axle mounted. Now normally, Volkswagens use a 12-point bolt. It's actually got 12 little points inside of there, also known as a triple square. You know, the typical six-point, which is the bolt here that I was given to replace, and these came in the kit, are not the same as a 12. This requires a very different tool. This is actually just a typical, you know, Allen key. This is not a typical Allen key, and while that may fit, if you put the six-point in there, you might and probably will strip it out. These are a real pain in the ass, and if they're not absolutely clean, and you don't get the tool put in them all the way, you will strip them out, and they always strip. I absolutely hate these things, and that might be one of the reasons why this kit comes with six points instead. Now, I don't know if Porsche came with a 12-point or a six-point. I really couldn't tell you. I do know that some buses came with 12 points on, I think it was the outside, and six points on the inside. Uh, CV joints, I don't know why they did that. I have no idea. And sometimes they're just mismatched. You'll find six points and 12 points on the same car on the same CV joint because the previous owner, you know, didn't know what he was doing. And sometimes you'll even find hex head bolts, which is... Uh, something that really doesn't belong on there and they're really tough to get a socket on them but again if you find that uh, that's something previous owner did <laughs> so we're gonna go with the ones that were in the kit these are nice brand new bolts they're clean and they use a, just a typical head socket and I like that these are a whole lot easier to to use to come up with you know I mean I have a toolbox full of them but the 12 point tool I can almost never find it you know I know where it's at and it's never in the same place twice so we're not we're not gonna use those we're gonna stay away from them. so anyways Yep, that's what we're doing today. Going with six pointers. Let's go ahead and drop that axle in place. And as you probably noticed, I jacked it up. And the reason for me jacking it up is because the two CV joint drive flanges, when they're in line, they're closer together. So the axle may not fit between the two. But when you move them apart a little bit, it's easier to drop the axle in between. Let me demonstrate. I almost forgot to do this. And you don't need a whole lot. Two fingers works, just like that. Put it right into the cup. Also to the outers. And in the other side too. Okay, good to go. And put this away someplace where you're not going to step on it. Or it's not going to get on your clothes. Or if your washing machine is in the garage, make sure you get it far away from where you do laundry. You don't need all that crap on your clothes. And it's time for the axle to go in. Now, I don't know where the holes are or how they're going to line up. So we're going to kind of wing it. But it went right in. It's actually a perfect fit. These 944 axles um, are going to work quite well on here. And I was having some real trouble finding these special torque washers. You see that? Unusual, unusual shape. And what these do is they help to hold the bolts together straight so that way they don't twist in their uh, their locations. Okay, there it is. I gotta clean the grease off my hands again. <laughs> Probably should have been wearing the gloves, but there's enough residual down there that it, it got stuck to me. And every time that I pick up or hold a tool, it slips out of my hand. So anyways, we're gonna come back to that in just a minute with some clean hands and a clean tool. Now what I typically do over here is I just get my extension, I get my hex headed socket. I do not like Allen keys, I think Allen keys suck. But with a ratchet I can make a lot more adjustments much more quickly. Plus you have that ratcheting action. Go ahead and get your first one threaded in. And then once you locate your second one, the rest of them are real easy. That's it. And I just use it like a screwdriver until I get them turned in enough that I can actually run the ratchet on. Now because the axles typically bend down, the boot is going to be in your way if you try to attack from the underside. So once I got the top one snugged up, I will then spin the axle over and get to the bottom ones. But first, I got to hit the ones at the wheel. So let's see if I can get them in there. These are going to be tricky because I can't see the bolt holes on this end. So I've got to find them by feel. I 
think I just found it on the first try. I don't know if I got that lucky or not. We're about to find out. <sighs> My hands are already too greasy to turn the tool. <laughs> yeah, it's going in. We got it. Got that one on right on the first try. I don't believe it. All right, now we have to locate the second one. And as I said, if you find the second one, the rest of them are real easy. Yeah, that one went right in also. Now, because I have the wheel jacked up on this side, I can just turn it like this and get to the next one. I like using a cordless drill on these, not so much an impact driver, because they do have to be torqued down to a specification. But it's a whole lot easier to get them run in. It's just a little tough to get in here and just keep turning these things. But I'll admit, it's a lot easier with no engine in the car and no body on the car. Going back to the inside one, the reason why we went back to this is because we're going to spin it around until we get to the ones that weren't snugged up yet, so they're on the top, so they're easy to get to. Okay, and that about sums it up. Now we just need to get the torque specification and get these things snugged up. Okay, that should just about finish it up. All those bolts are now tightened down to 30 foot-pounds. All 24 of them. Six on each CV joint. So yeah, 24 of them. And that concludes my axle installation. Now, I don't think it looks so bad with the gold ones all on one side, because if you look, and I'm looking in the camera here on the screen, and everything looks silver on this side. But these are all gold. That's gold, that's gold. It actually doesn't look that bad. And then when you get over here, everything is silver. It's, it's goofy, but... Um, you know, the fact that, that I split up the, the colored connectors that way, it, it, it's really, it's just a nuisance, but it's not really bad. It looks like it's, a, it's like an artistic, uh, artistic flair, that's what it is. This was my little artistic twist that I put on the car, so if anybody ever asks if they're working on a car with me, you know, why are these things different colors? Well, I did it on purpose. I wanted it to be, you know, different on both sides. Yeah, that's the ticket. <laughs> so anyways, I think that's about to sum this up, so, uh... I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning it down. I'm going to wipe down those CV joint boots. I'm going to wipe down the axles because if you leave them greasy, if you do take this thing out on the road, it's going to pick up all kinds of road dust and sand and grit's going to stick in it and it turns into that road grime that's really hard to get off down the road. It'll take like a screwdriver to scrape it off. I mean, even uh, degreasers have trouble eating into that. So I'll probably wipe them down real good and then I'll spray them down with some degreaser tomorrow and hit them with the hose real quick and just make sure everything is nice and clean. And uh, I think that just about nails it. So anyways, that should about sum it up for today. I got the axles installed, as I said, and uh, it, it was quite a saga chasing down the right parts and making sure that I had all the correct bolts. I've actually been asking friends if they had enough bolts or enough washers to spot me some to see if I could uh, <laughs> make a complete set. And then it turned out that the axles actually came with them, but only one set had them, so I had to return one axle to go buy another axle. They had the appropriate boots, and then, of course, once I wound up getting the part, it had different colored boots on it. And the funny thing is, on those boots, actually, just, just a little tidbit of information, they actually have part numbers stamped on them, and despite being different colors, they're actually identical part numbers. So how about that? So I guess there's just some kind of manufacturing variant, or, you know, whatever whatever batch it was that came out of it, uh, yeah, it's just it came out different. Apparently, that, that's the same thing that happened on the, uh, the Kaffir bar. And I talked to uh, Kevin at Cool Rides Customs. He described to me what happened there. And uh, the same manufacturer sent out the parts, and it was just a different different batch, and they coded them differently. So anyways, uh, that's what happened with that. But I still need to finish editing that video where I talk about this Kaffir bar, but that's not what this video is about today. This video is about the axle install. And as you can see, the axles are effectively on there, and they do what they're supposed to do. So... I am very, very pleased with that. Something else done. It looks like it's in gear. I see the uh, input shaft turning. <laughs> One more thing done. Uh, I think that's about the last thing that I can do to this rear end, short of um, just torquing everything down and uh, making sure that the brakes are bled. Other than that, the rear end is done, and the next thing that goes in is um, this big empty space that's here. Gee, I wonder what goes there. If you guessed engine... You guessed right. The next video just might be me installing an engine and attempting to get it to run. Hopefully I get started on that one tomorrow first thing in the morning. I'm hoping that I don't get too busy for work. Of course, I've got um, today's Sunday. I've got four more days 
of work time on this car <laughs> before it hits whatever level of done that it's going to be. Whatever level of done it's going to be before the car show. And, um, well, I'd like to have it running and driving, which means, of course, the brakes are going to need to work. Uh, it's going to need uh, a lot of a lot of stuff, really. I need to go through the, uh, the pedal assembly, which I have hanging up up here. In fact, there's two sets there. They don't look that bad, actually. One of them looks like it might even be uh, semi semi new, but I still have to clean it up and paint it. And I should put that high on my agenda. Um, I probably should start doing that tomorrow, along with getting that engine mounted in there at the same time. Pull the clutch cable through, pull the throttle cable through, and uh, start finalizing some of that type of stuff. And if that stuff is good, uh, the engine would boat right in and wants to get back my front brakes from Adam. And I mentioned that earlier in this video, but since I started recording that video yesterday, I don't really remember what I said. Now, I, I talked to him real quickly via text message, and I thought he said that they were going to be done that day, but I think I thought incorrectly. Now, you need to go check out ABOM 79s channel. He actually posted a Saturday night special, I forget what number it is, whatever the most recent one is, where he started working on my brakes. He started turning the bearing adapters on a lathe, and he started getting some of that stuff set up. He said it's about three weeks of work for him, in between the other stuff that he does, it's not three weeks completely through. Huh? <laughs> but uh, like anything else, you know, if you want something custom, it it's, takes time, and if it's going to take time, it's going to cost you. And if it goes to a machinist, or if it goes to a computer programmer like me, you know, you're going to have to pay for it. I mean, custom is custom. And you get a custom price for a custom device. So how about that? It even rhymes. Whoa. So, guess what? That's right. Like, comment, subscribe. Pluck that little dingle belly down there next to the subscribe button. That way you get updates every time I upload a new video. I'm going to try to get one up tomorrow where we put the engine in. I'm going to get started on that bright and early. As soon as I get up and out of bed, uh, hopefully if nothing's going on, i got a nice shady spot in here because the sun shines in the driveway at about that hour. And, um... I believe I'm probably going to be lucky on that, and the engine's going to run, because I put them underneath the uh, workbench a couple years ago, and I know they were running when I put them away, and I packed all the uh, intake and exhaust ports with a uh, paper towel to keep all the dust and dirt out of them, so I think I'm just going to put them in there, change some oil in them, crank the engine, and make sure that it builds up oil pressure, and then uh, make sure we got a spark, dump some gas in it, and see what happens. Oh, I think it's going to run. You're going to want to subscribe. So you're going to want to pluck that little dingle belly so you get that update once that video goes online. So thanks for watching, you guys. I really appreciate it. I appreciate everything you do. Channel's grown a lot this month, probably more than it, than it ever has. I mean, it's, it's really, really grown. And I think ABOM79 talking about me uh, helped considerably. <laughs> so thank you, Adam. Go over to ABOM79's channel. Check out the uh, Saturday Night Special where he's working on my brake parts. And uh, hopefully we'll have them back in the next few days. Hopefully. Now, like I said, his videos are out of sync. So if I post something about my brakes done before he finishes machining them, that, that's why. We're a little bit out of sync as far as the, our timing of our video releases. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll talk to him about that to make sure I don't step on his toes. But anyways, thanks so much, you guys, for watching. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.